population wise, as far as buck doe ratios, uh, what is healthy there? A lot of people have different opinions on this, I think. You know, you take all the fawns born in Michigan this year or Pennsylvania or any other state, about half of those are going to be buck fawns and about half will be doe fawns. So they start their life at a very balanced ratio. So what that means is as managers, we want to make sure that they, that ratio can stay balanced as they mature. Um, because deer are far more social than many people realize. You know, they, they evolved with a very complex social order. There's a lot of interaction. But all of that stuff works best when you have good age structures of both bucks and doe and balanced sex ratios. So you know, we hear people talk all the time about, you know, like sex ratios and what should they be. And uh, for that, we really need to define exactly what we're talking about. And, and in most cases, deer managers are talking about the pre-hunt adult sex ratio. So the number of adults, those are deer that are one and older. So we're not counting the fawns, but those deer that are one and older um, alive right before we start hunting. Because in many cases, once we get into the hunting season, we harvest deer, you know, at, at unbalanced ratios. Michigan's a perfect example. Right. We shoot a lot more bucks there than we do antlerless deer each year. So the actual adult sex ratio that we're looking for to be balanced is that pre-hunt adult sex ratio. And it doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. And, and in reality, it's very hard to get it to be one-to-one. -one. And, and even if in nature we can get one-to-one, -one, it's very difficult to keep it there. because as we said, fawns are born at about that one-to-one -one ratio. But as deer mature, um, non-hunting mortality, they die at different rates. And it's just like me or you, Adam. Who does it cost more for vehicle insurance or life insurance? Guys or ladies? Yeah. Cost more for guys because we're yeah. more likely to do something stupid and hurt ourselves. Right. It's the same thing in the deer world. So even if you can drive that adult sex ratio to be one-to-one, -one, it almost immediately wants to become more skewed toward does. So what I tell people is, let's keep this very balanced. You, you, you likely aren't going to get to one-to-one, -one and you don't need that. But it's pretty easy to have two adult does for every adult buck on the landscape. That's very doable. And in places that do a good job harvesting an appropriate number of antlerless deer, nearly all of those have that ratio. Now, that doesn't mean that's going to be your observed ratio. You know, if there's two to one in your area, you may not see a buck for every two does because, it's, you know, we have a, a visibility bias against bucks. For whatever reason, they, they can just do a really good job hiding. Right. But uh, if you survey that deer herd um, pre-hunt, um, in many cases, we are at that two to certainly three adult does per buck. And, uh, and those are pretty healthy situations. If you gotcha. get to that three adult does per buck, though, that often leads to skewed ratios from an observation standpoint. You might see five or 10 does per buck while you're actually hunting. So that's why it's important. We want to keep that balanced. And from a health standpoint, keep it balanced. And uh, But what too many people get caught up on the importance of that sex ratio. What I tell people is, hey, let's back up. A better question to ask is, what is the age structure of the buck and doe segment of the population? Because you can have very balanced sex ratios, but if all of the bucks are only one or two years old, right. that's not really a very healthy deer herd. You know, it's much more important to make sure that you have bucks and does in all age classes. That is when you can get uh, a healthy situation. Right numbers of deer for the landscape, deer in all age classes, and suddenly a lot of really good things happen for that deer herd and for hunters.